Now, parents of a three-month-old baby born without arms in the northern region say they're under pressure from family and community members to kill the child because she's physically challenged. Now, children born with deformities in the community where they reside, uh, Kabon Wuli, are considered bad luck and evil spirits. But parents of the baby named Mauko, loosely translated as only God, uh, are determined not to conform to the age-old beliefs and practices. Maxwell Agbagba traveled there and has the rest of the story. I am on a motorbike heading to Kabonbule, a community about three and a half hours drive from Tamale. Persons who work in the child protection space have alerted me to an age-old belief where physically challenged babies are seen as evil spirits. Here, I meet residents who tell me some children who are victims of the practice leave the hospital very healthy but die later under very mysterious circumstances. The Northern Region Police has no record of these alleged killings. But residents say it is usually done on the blind side of law enforcement officers and people who will possibly raise an alarm. I'm now at the residence of the three-month-old baby born without arms in Carbon Wooly. She cries as her mother tries to lull her to sleep. Father of the baby, Ananias Kweku Viagbado, says he's under pressure to do away with his baby because she's physically challenged. My friends and loved ones do not want to get closer to me now. I have also decided not to allow outsiders get access to the baby so they will not attribute any misfortune in the community to my child. I have had misunderstandings and quarrels with my in-laws. My in-law says my child will die if she enters her house because that's the belief that such children should not enter her house. That is the belief and practice here. When my child was born, the midwives advised me not to harm him. They told me children are delivered at the hospital, but any time they check up on them later, they are told they are dead. They kill them, many of them. We hear it all the time. He says he will not bow to the custom and beliefs of his community. Mother of the baby, Mary Nong, says there's pressure on her to get rid of baby Mauko. They want to kill my child because they say she's not human. I know she's human and she'll be great in future. I've now met Solomon Atta, his secretary to the chief of Carbon Wule. He says it is the belief of the community that physically challenged children are evil spirits. He cites an instance where a physically challenged one week old baby was killed. Children who are born disabled at times uh, would do away with them uh, because we say they are not fit into the society. Even in school self, I don't think that they, we allow them to go to school. We believe that they have evil spirits or maybe it is a uh, sort of witchcraft. The witches are hunting them. Maybe the person is born a witch. So such a person, we don't want him in the society. I think some years one happened, a small child was born about a week. The, the child started eating. So the, the parents have to do away with the child. Wait, because the child started eating food. Uh, food. One week. One week. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not Why? Good. It, it is not practice. In fact, it is it is in it is in humor. A, 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 a child. When we then the child start eating there, I don't, I don't think it is normal. Fufu. The, the leftover. The mother saw the, the child eating. So they, 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 they have to do away. To the child. So the child was killed? The child was killed. Solomon Atta agreed to take me to the chief priest of Carbon Wule, an old man whose name loosely translates as death is better than trouble. He confirms the accession by the secretary to the chief as he says physically challenged children are not fit to live amongst humans. It is all part of our belief. They are all from God but not all of them are from him. 
Some of the children do not look like humans. When there are deformities in the leg and other parts of their body, we discard them. I now I what you say? Yeah. You use any part? You need moon internet. Okay. Because I I oh 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 you you move now. Ugobia ni in in to me the smano. Okay. We do not live with them because they do not look like humans. Okay, so the hospital, where, where is the hospital? Godfrey Golden Vovrego is the Pandai district pastor of the Seventh day Adventist Church. He is one of the people pushing for change in the community. Honestly speaking, uh, it has been a big, big problem in the community. The most painful thing is the innocent child and the family, the parents. The way they have been stigmatized uh, in the community. In fact, this my brother has gone through a serious, uh, serious, uh, let me say, stigmatization. As pressure to get rid of three months old Mauko grows, her mother and father say they are optimistic she'll become a shining light for her community and a story will change the age long belief. Right, let's talk about this. Uh, joining me on Zoom for this conversation is Mr. Bright Appiah. He's the Executive Director of Child Rights International. Uh, Mr. Appiah, uh, good afternoon and thank you for your time. All right, now you, uh, you might have to unmute your microphone there. Um, now you, you work in this space, uh, I don't. I'm shocked, are you? Uh, yes, um, I'm a bit shocked uh, uh, because it's, it's a decision of a community, not because an individual decided to engage in that kind of act. So that makes me a bit surprised that uh, what what brought about that, what what went to that decision and all that. So I'm a bit surprised about the, the, that when I saw it the first time. Right. Now, I mean, some of the stories that Maxwell is being told by the members of the community, they, I mean, they beggar belief. A child was killed because she was spitting out food. So that child is dead now. And the community speaks <laughs> yeah. openly about it. I, I, I'm, I'm confused, really. Is this another thing we can say is a lack of education, really? Exactly. Exactly. I think that the whole community needs some kind of orientation uh, and, and if that is done i think it should change their perception you know so if for instance the example that they gave for that matter a child must be dealt with or done away with it's 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 uh, it's you will not classify it as a cultural belief but i think that it's purely based on ignorance and and for that matter they took that action so it's, it's, it's a multiple approach that needs to be used in dealing with that particular community. It's not only things that they have committed or they are violating the uh, right of children, but I think that uh, beyond that, you also need to provide them some level of education to understand uh, what uh, the makeup of children are, you know, from the medical point of view, also, so that they would, they, they would appreciate the context in which they have to pursue their cultural beliefs. But what is, what is most important is that no matter what, a child cannot, you cannot take a child's life on the basis of cultural belief. So irrespective of whatever they've done, I think that um, there's some level of uh, offense that have been committed against children. For that matter, uh, we, need to, we need to pursue that angle. I personally uh, wanted to call so that whatever we can also do to assist that community or to assist your reporter or the station, uh, we are ready to do that so that at least uh, the lives of children can be saved in that community. Are we not at the point, Mr. Apia, where, led by institutions like yours, society needs to say that, in fact, this is beyond education? I'll tell you why I'm asking this. In a, a town called Dinshira Obwase, yeah. the community masked up and killed a soldier. A soldier who is trained to die anyway, but he was killed unjustly, and all of them were prosecuted. They are currently in court. Now we have a village where they are killing babies, not soldiers, babies. And we have a constitution that says that in all things, we should put the interest of the child first. 
I mean, since when did this become something to be combated with education? Why are we not no, rounding them all up and, 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 and jailing them? There's a whole community action that, are, that, that they've taken. So it means that there's some level of agreement. And for killing, it's a crime. That one, you cannot say that you want to use education to deal with that. So anybody involved in that kind of act must be brought to book. Uh, that, that is a fact. But beyond that, the whole community needs education. So the processes must, uh, we feel that, look, what that, that action must be prosecuted and anybody involved, whether it is a cultural belief or not, you have taken the life of a child. And even taking your own life is criminal. To what extent can you take somebody's life on the basis of a certain cultural belief and think that it is normal to the extent that those who refuse to also succumb to some of these decisions have been harassed and have been stigmatized in the community. That is a big thing. So the criminal aspect is there. But looking at the community in, in its entirety, I think that they would also need education. We are not ruling out the, the criminal aspect of it. Uh, I think that action must be taken. And if, yeah, so if, I, if, if this I, report can be submitted to Ghana Police Service, I think that we would also assist in that process so that we can achieve certain results. I guess my question is this. So this education, should it happen while they are in jail? Or should we simply go into the community and offer them education as a, as, a, as a counter for them agreeing to murder children? No, you see, the, somebody is responsible. If, if you listen to the, the, the Ochami, uh, the, the Ochami to the, the priest, clearly it means that that order is coming from a person who believes that the gods have asked him to undertake some of these activities. That person has totally committed. <laughs> but if, if my pastor tells me to go and kill someone and I obey that order, I will still be sent to jail. Everybody of who course, assisted me in that will be sent to jail. So really, uh, uh, is, there, uh, is there any nitpicking? Is there any separation here? If the entire community believes that the children they have been killing so far, you know, uh, it, it, they were doing it under orders. Should they not still all be rounded up and prosecuted? And then we can educate yeah, them while they are serving well, whoever their Whoever gives the order and whoever also engaged in the process of killing must be arrested. And after that, and those who are better than those who supported it and those who covered it exactly, up. Exactly. All those people must be rounded up and picked up. So for us, even to start with, I think that if this uh, report can also be submitted to Ghana Police, uh, whatever it is that we need to do from our end, we will do to support that. But we are also saying that beyond that, there's still we need to also engage the community because I strongly believe that there are some people in the community that do not support this kind of act. If not, I don't think that even your reporter will have the opportunity to visit that community to do that. And that those people must also be encouraged to, to stand on their feet to defend the right of children. And then the, the community must also be given some level of light so that they would appreciate the content in which the state regard children and what we need to do for them. So as for the criminal aspect, we are not ruling it out at all. But if step can be taken for the report to be made, why not? We would also uh, uh, lend our support so that we can achieve results. So let's talk about those you just mentioned, the people who are fighting to resist this sort of regime in the village, uh, the, the parents of Mauku who are fighting hard for his life. What sort of support can an organization like yours give to people who are under that sort of pressure? Well, uh, we, uh, we, we don't know their state. Normally, before as organization we give support, we need to carry out what we call the, the social inquiry report on the family to determine what, what kind of support that we need to give. But I, I, uh, in a normal circumstances, if you're facing uh, stigmatization, the immediate thing that is required is for us to evacuate them from the community. But in doing so, it means that we are also uh, supporting that, you know, but their presence in the community can change a lot of things. So whatever support that we will need, we would, uh, they will need that we, we, we will support them to live in the community, to champion the cause, to provide education, we will do that. So if you are able to get any social inquiry report on them, why not? We would provide any support that they will require in the process.